Okay, so since I like to make Drum Dumbs the most interactive horror channel on YouTube, we're going to try something a little different. I'm going to give you the power, okay? Balls in your court. This is called Bleeding the Comets. This is the very first episode. We're going to do top 10 uh, character arcs in horror. Really, your top 10 character arcs in horror, okay? So, I'll see you in the comments. What is up, guys? This is going to be fun. Um, I just came up with this idea, you know, because every time I do a ranking video, that's where I get the most comments, and I always see so many choices that I did not put on the list. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make you guys put your money where your mouth is, okay? So what I did was I combed my comments of my last ranking video, uh, top 10 horror uh, character arcs, and I did my ranking of your comments, okay? So I, I, I found, 10 great choices, plus I'm gonna give you two honorable mentions, okay? And again, these are your choices, all right? So if, if you don't like one of these, then throw it at the member. I'm gonna give their names and everything, okay? I, I'm uh, I'm innocent in this one, all right? I, I've done nothing wrong, okay? I'm just, I, I rank them, that's about it. But other than that, this is gonna be a lot of fun, okay? And I'm gonna read your comments on said movie as well, okay? So let's just jump right into it, all right? First honorable mention, I'm gonna go Anna from Martyrs, and this is gonna be the rare exception where I put a movie on here that I haven't seen, but there were a few comments in there that actually mentioned Anna from Martyrs, and this is a movie that's on my review list. I can't wait to finally get to this one. I can't give you my opinion on the character because again, I haven't seen it, but I will read one of the comments from, I, I had the, this is another reason why I put this on here. The, the username is Hugh Jess Hole, okay? <laughs> if you're a Howard Stern fan, then you'll get that. Well, you'll probably get that anyway, because it's Hugh Jess Hole. There was a character on the Howard Stern show. Uh, he passed away, actually. Rest in peace. But he said Hugh Jess Hole. And the guy's name was Riley Martin. Uh, man, so many great memories with Riley Martin. But anyway, yeah. Let's read this comment. Okay, I found the comment here. Hugh Jess Hole. He says... The most jarring, intense, and best character arc in, in horror history is easily Anna from Martyrs. If you've seen it, you know the changes she goes through. Second in line would be Sarah from Inside 2007. I haven't seen Inside either. I actually own both those movies. I just got to get to them. I haven't gotten to them yet, okay? Now, the rest of these I've seen. I got one more honorable mention for you. And the next honorable mention is Peter Vincent from Fright Night, Erica Cummings. And her comment was, great list. My personal favorite character arc is Peter Vincent, Roddy McDowell, and Fright Night. And I agree with her. I think Peter Vincent, uh, he didn't believe in vampires, obviously. He was just doing a show. But then when Charlie goes to him and, and you know, he says, I need your help. You're my, you're my only hope, Obi-Wan. Uh, Peter Vincent, uh, he's reluctant at first, but then eventually he does see that Jerry across the street is a vampire and gradually he changes over time. So this is an art. By the end of that movie, Peter Vincent is a full believer in vampires. Next one is going to be Cole from The Babysitter, Stranger Boy 101, and I'm glad he mentioned this one. A, because it's a male and I get some more males on the list, and B, this is a really good example, actually. First, I'll read his comment. He says, my favorite, personally, is Cole from The Babysitter. He began as a scared 12-year-old kid, then became sort of a man. And that's pretty much the reasoning right there. This is a child at the beginning of the movie, and because of everything that he goes through, uh, he pretty much grows up and becomes a man by the end of the movie. And I think children are, are going to be susceptible to arcs more than adults even. You know, I think children, they change quicker. They learn quicker from stressful situations. And so, very good choice. Number nine, I saw a couple for this one. Tree from Happy Death Day. This is a very good choice, actually. I just think Jessica Roth's performance overall is fantastic in Happy Death Day. I have major, major problems in the horror department with that movie, and especially the second movie. But the one saving grace about it is Jessica Roth, for sure. So much so that I want to see her in a full-blown horror movie, like, so bad. But Hector Montalvo, he is the one that mentioned Cole. Gonna read his comment. Yeah, and then and, uh, his comment says, The other protagonist of Happy Death Day, she goes from being an uncaring royal bitch to a caring, sensitive woman who fights back the killer. Very true. Very, I, I could not have summed it up better, Hector. You did my work for me on that one. Thank you, good sir. This is fun, actually. Number eight is, uh, this is a good one, actually. Jennifer from <laughs> I Spit on Your Grave. 
Jason Les Gorbo. I hope I said that right, Jason. And he says, uh, Jennifer from I Spit on Your Grave, uh, Amelia from The Babadook, Agnes from Bug, Kathy from Monster, and Molly from It Stains the Sands Red. I haven't seen a few of those. He didn't really give his reasoning, but I completely get this because this is a character that's, you know, just a young, innocent woman. And I Spit on Your Grave, it's probably one of the most graphic rape movies ever created. She is repeatedly raped throughout this movie, or at least the first half. And then the second half of the movie, uh, she gets her revenge, and she's fully changed by the time uh, she starts that revenge. If you look at uh, Camille Keaton uh, after the rape scene, she looks like a completely different person, like a, a beaten and battered person than what she was at the beginning of the movie, which makes me think they probably shot this movie in chronological order. Correct me if I'm wrong, but for an actress to be able to handle... It just rape scenes like that it's got to trigger something you know so much so that even if you haven't even been raped i would imagine it would be tough for any actress to take on a part like this number seven is going to be father karis from the exorcist uh, a couple shout outs on this one anthony scarpulla and jed schaffer uh anthony scarpulla says the young priest from the exorcist because he goes from not believing in any of the supernatural and then and is even losing his faith but when he sees Regan, he completely changes and even kills himself to save her. Very, very true. That is such an art. When you're a religious type of person, you're literally losing your faith. You don't believe anymore. And then a case like this comes along and it just like drastically changes you as a person and restores your own faith. And he gives his own life to save Regan. Wow, what an arc. And quick shout out to Michael K Koglazer. He actually said Father Marin from The Exorcist. So I think Father Karras has the bigger arc, though. And actually, Jed Schaffer mentioned Tree, not The Exorcist. So my bad on that. Okay, number six uh, is Alice from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. I think I did see a couple of these in here. But uh, Mickey, a user named Mickey, actually mentioned Alice, Nightmare 4. And he states, I always loved Alice from A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. She went from a wallflower that couldn't stand up for herself to a warrior who kicked Freddy's ass. Could not have said it better on that one. And yeah, I remember in Alice, she was in actually two movies. She was in four and five. But really, four alone is a pretty decent arc. And I'll even say, even more convincing of an arc than Nancy. I'm not saying she's a better final girl than Nancy. Absolutely not. I mean, actually, hell no. But there's more of an arc there, I think, because Nancy started off pretty strong in Nightmare Alice, like he says, was like a wallflower, you know? She uh, was very innocent and um, a little naive. As she's seeing all this stuff going around her, she starts becoming stronger and wanting to stand up against Freddy, which she does in glorious fashion. Number five, Arkin from <laughs> The Collector. Robert Bradley gets the credit on this one. A couple of my picks, which would be Derek from Bad Taste, love that character, Arkin from The Collector, just love how he started as a criminal thief, then had to put all his bad side of him aside because there's an absolute real evil he had to step up to. And very true. I like when you have, uh, a, a, not necessarily evil, but like a, a bad character, like a criminal, and he gets put into a situation. And there's been a few movies like this where he has to step up to the plate and sometimes, you know, have to give up his own freedom. He might end up going to jail, but he chooses to, uh, to save the person that's in danger. And that's what Arkin does. And Arkin's not really a bad guy per se. He's really doing it just so he can get, you know, money for his, uh, his girlfriend or wife. Not to say what he's doing is right at all, but uh, that moral high ground comes upon him after he sees the collector come into the house. And overall, I think it changes him as a person and probably makes him not want to go down that path again. Number four is going to be Taylor from Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This is from a friend of mine, actually, Chris Osbury. We, we've actually ran into each other a couple of times at Spooky Empire, but, but that's actually a really good pick, Taylor, because she starts off the movie as this like journalist and she's interviewing... Leslie Vernon, and then as the movie goes along, uh, she starts fearing for her life. Uh, she starts to buy into how real this situation is, and you know she realizes that she is going to be the final girl eventually in the movie, and so it changes her as a person. And it's conflicting too because she starts, I, I think, 
getting feelings for Leslie Vernon as the story goes along. And then eventually she realizes that he is going to try to kill her. He kills a whole bunch of other people. And so that gradually changes her throughout the course of the movie. I'd say, if anything, she learns a lesson through all this. That, that even uh, serial killers, even horror icons are real people. And she ends up having feelings for this guy. But uh, at the end of the day, he's a killer. Number three, Chief Brody from Jaws. This is a really good one, actually. Uh, George Heilman gets the credit on that one. Uh, and his comment is, maybe because it's my favorite movie overall, but I'd say Chief Brody from Jaws is my top, as this is a guy who goes from being scared of an open ocean and doing what he's told by officials and to taking charge and battling a freaking shark by himself with a glorious victory. Very true. This is a guy that's deathly afraid of water. Why he took the job, I have no idea. But he didn't think there'd be anything like this going on in Amity. And so uh, eventually he has the whole town against him in, because of money, which is kind of funny. We're in this whole covid thing and that is an issue that's on the table with some people you know the economy and that's kind of what what the story of jaws is and so eventually he has to like put aside his own fear of the water and he is the guy in the end that saves the day and kills the shark good on you chief brody number two is clarice <laughs> starling from the silence of the lambs uh great one submitted by tila uh longtime subscriber of the channel thank you tila and she states, I would add Clarice from Silence of the Lambs. Her instincts become sharper. She becomes more assertive and begins to confront her inner fear of abandonment. Beautifully said, Tila. Uh, it all combines to lead to her taking down Bill. And very true. At the beginning of this movie, uh, she's, you know, really wet behind the ears, brand new to the, the FBI. And her first job her first subject to interview is freaking Hannibal Lecter and I think there's there's a big arc for her but also that art is kind of created by Hannibal he's the the uh the mentor in some deranged way that guides her along the way and I think if it wasn't for Hannibal she would have never been able to take down uh Bill Buffalo Bill you know he gives her the tools that she needs and uh, I think that's why the relationship between Hannibal and Clarice has always been such an interesting one. But there is definitely an arc there for Clarice. And number one, this is my biggest regret not putting on this list, and that is Arnie from Christine. Thank you, David Perry, and I'm sure there were a couple others that actually mentioned Arnie. And as a matter of fact, uh, after I record this, I'm recording my review for Christine, a VHS review. VHS Blu-ray hybrid. It's right down there, actually. And he says, um, Arnie Cunningham from Christine. Uh, hello, McFly. No, he didn't say that. Even Dennis, literally the definition of a hu of huge character arcs. So shocked you didn't have either. I'm shocked, too. A lot of times, the, the best answer is the one that's too close to you to see it. And I think that's what happened with Arnie. But Arnie, I put him at number one on this list. It's such an amazing arc. And really, that's the point of Christine. Uh... Just watching this character go from like this really geekish persona to becoming obsessed with this car. And then by the end of the movie, he almost becomes evil and it costs him his life. How's that for a freaking arc? I mean, if you look at just this picture of Arnie from uh, the beginning to the end of the movie, uh, completely different. You know, such an arc, such an amazing arc. So... This was a lot of fun, guys. I'm definitely going to do this for some more of my uh, top tens. I, I can reach back because I've done over 100 of these things now. And I can just comb through those comments and give you guys the credit. You let you guys shine for a little bit. So let me know what you guys thought of this down in the comments, okay? I had a blast uh, just letting you guys take the floor. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for all Fridays. Follow me at Drumdums on all my socials. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drumdum out.